Hello, I'm Jeff Power, senior writer with Real Time Fantasy Sports, and welcome to another edition of the Real Time Fantasy Sports Show. On today's show, we are going to give you our 2023 running back preview for the coming season, going over all of our favorite running backs, guys we're targeting, guys we're fading, some sleepers, and our favorite rookie as well. And I'm going to be joined by Logan Glasser once again of Real Time Fantasy Sports. Logan, thanks for much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Jeff. Yeah, the rookie, that's uh, not rookie, but the running back position in general is always a tricky one. So we're going to go over it today. And I, I don't think this year is any easier, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are as well. Yeah, it's kind of very similar to previous years with that. We also have a couple of rookies that are going to make a little, little bit of a splash. Um, everyone's saying Robinson could be one of the greatest running back prospects ever. So we'll see how he does this year. A lot of hype surrounding him, though. Yeah, definitely. A lot of a lot of high hype surrounding Robinson for sure. How are you approaching the running back position? Are you going early? Are you really loading up on running backs like people have done in the past? Are you fading it early? What's your thoughts? I think it kind of whoever falls to me is what I'm going to go with. I think in previous years, I made sure that I had a running back in the first couple of rounds. And this year, I don't know if I'm going to reach for that. I think there are some further down options that I'm going to explore, um, especially with injuries to a couple of players like Javante Williams might miss a couple of games. Brees Hall possibly could miss a game or two for coming back from that injury. Um, so you got to be looking at their backups as well. Also, we're filming this before cut dates are happening. Dalvin Cook could possibly get cut. Alvin Kamara, his suspension's still up in the air. So, I mean, there's a lot of value in these backup running backs that I'm going to be looking into. Yeah, I agree with that. And I was kind of, at the thought uh, this year, I'm going to go receiver early. It's a lot less uncertainty, but, but I started drafting in the receiver position so deep that I, I, I'm yeah right back in. Uh, you know, I'm going right back in and getting running backs early again. So I don't know if it's the right strategy or not, but I just I don't know. I have a tough time passing up some of these elite backs early in the draft, even if they carry a little uncertainty. It's it's, it's a tough spot, definitely for sure. So let's go. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk about our targets first. So give me a couple targets you like for this coming season. Yeah, round. first target I'm going to go with is Ramondre Stevenson. Last year he ranked eighth overall in running backs, um, and he's got the entire backfield to himself now. Damien Harris has gone; he's off to Buffalo. So this is Ramondre Stevenson's backfield, and he's going to absolutely dominate. I think again this year, weeks three through fifteen, he was one of the top fantasy running backs uh, he struggled the first two weeks and then the final two weeks but in that middle period he was one of the top fantasy running backs he's currently being drafted near the end of round two number eight overall for running backs um, so he's got about expected value right there but I really like him as a good safe option um, the second one I'm going to be looking at for a target is Rashad White um, he's going to be the leading back for Tampa with Fournette gone and that offense, I think, is going to struggle a little bit. I, I don't; they're not going to be as dominant, but I don't think they're going to be absolutely awful. So I think he's a very good pass catching back, and he's been told that he's going to be the lead back, and he's currently being drafted as the number nineteen overall back. So I really like his value. So I'm going to be targeting him in my drafts around rounds, maybe about six or seven. I like both those picks. Those are both guys I've been getting in early drafts as well. I think that that's a great call, especially on Stevenson. He could be huge this year. My targets, my first one is David Montgomery. So I know Gibbs is there. He really put a dent in Montgomery's overall value, but I think that's going to be a good thing in terms of fantasy value when it comes draft day. Right now, Montgomery's ADP is 72.69. So that's a that's a number three back type range. You can get him really late. And he's going to get kind of the Jamal Williams type role, in my opinion, in this offense could get a lot of the goal line work. Williams had 17 rushing touchdowns last year and Gibbs has never been a three down back yet at this stage of his career. Didn't really carry the load in Alabama. Now he moves to Detroit. He could get used more in a pass catching role, kind of like DeAndre Swift was. I still think he'll get more overall touches than Swift, but if you look in the history of the Lions last couple of years, they've run the ball a lot. Both backs two years ago had more than 150 plus carries. So I'm expecting 200 plus touches from Montgomery. I think his value is really good at this point. So it's more of a value pick, in my opinion, with Montgomery here. And I think he's definitely worth uh, the risk there at the ADP of around 73. So I like him a lot. My other one is another guy in a new spot, and that's Miles Sanders. 
Really like him a lot in Carolina. He had a career best season last season in Philadelphia, though. That explosive offense, three 100 yard rushing games, fifth overall in rushing. Uh, he was 15th overall in fantasy running back scoring as well, but he got next to no work in the passing game, caught just 20 passes. I think that changes in Carolina. He's going to catch a lot more passes. Touchdowns might go down, which could hurt his value a little bit. Pass, pass catching ability is going to go up in this offense. So I think he could get the most touches of his career. And I think they could lean on the running game a little bit with a rookie quarterback, likely starting with Bryce Young. So I think Sanders is a good target as a number two back this year for fantasy teams. Let's talk about the opposite side of things now, Logan. How about some guys you're fading, guys you don't think you're going to get much stock of? Yeah, a guy I'm fading is Travis Etienne. I think this might be one of my biggest fades overall in drafts. So he's been told that he's going to have less carries than in 2022. Um, it's going to be kind of more of a committee pr- approach between Dearness Johnson, uh, Tank Bigsby, and Travis Etienne. Last year, Etienne played in every single game, and he only ranked number 17 overall in running backs. And he's going to be having less touches this year. So that's definitely a big fade for me this year in drafts. I just don't – the volume is going to be less than last year. And he didn't even perform that well last year while playing in every game and having that high volume. He had a couple of really big games that kind of stood out. But besides those couple of games during the middle of the season, um, he wasn't that impressive from a fantasy perspective. Um, second one I'm going to go with is Isaiah Pacheco. Um, he had no games last year where he scored above 16.2 points. Um, he, and he played in all of 2022. He only had one game where he rushed more than a hundred yards. What I can say about Pacheco is that he's very consistent. Um, you're going to be looking at about 10 to 15 points every time you play him. Last 11 games of the season, he averaged between 9 and 16 points for every single game. So it's a very consistent option, but where he's being drafted, you don't want consistency um, in that five, six rounds. Um, You want a player that's going to make an impact on your team. So if you want consistency, I would rather have that in rounds 8 through 10. So I'm going to be fading Pacheco just because his ceiling is not that high. I like that call on Pacheco. I just – I don't trust the Chiefs running back. It's so hard to get on board with them with the, the way it's ha- way the last few years have played out. Yeah, McKinnon kind of took over near the playoffs, getting won yeah. a lot of leagues. Exactly, you're right. All right, one of my fades is a guy who is moving to an offense that is supposed to be like the Chiefs, and that's Washington, and that's Brian Robinson. So. I just am not very high on him. Uh, He had quite the rookie season, though. I mean, he was shot during training camp in an attempted carjacking, I believe. Whole career was in jeopardy. Came back. Just a great story. He started 9 of 12 games for the Commanders. But he averaged less than four yards per carry. Now they have Eric Bieniemy, like I just mentioned, the Chiefs' former offensive coordinator taking over. And I'm not sure he's going to be a great fit for that offense. I think Antonio Gibson's a much better fit. I could see Robinson getting fewer touches. He may have that starting job, might get the goal line work, but I just think his ceiling is really limited in this offense. I'd much rather have Antonio Gibson, so I'm fading Brian Robinson this year. I just don't think it's a great fit for him in Washington with Eric Biennemi running the show now for that offense. And my other fade, this might be a bit of a surprise, but I'm scared. Derrick Henry, I I mean, his workload is just – enormous the last few years he had 349 rush attempts last year he's led the league in rush attempts three of four seasons I don't think they're going to be very good this year as well that QB situation Ryan Tannehill they're talking about maybe you know even cutting him you know one of those training camp cuts that you mentioned earlier and I don't like the receiving core I think they're going to lean on the running game a lot and Man, his workload has just been huge the last few years. I think it has to catch up with him sooner than later. So I just think he's too big of a risk, in my opinion. I love him when he's on the field. He's obviously one of the best backs in the game. He's a beast. He's unbelievable. But, man, that workload just scares me. Scares the heck out of me, Logan. I'm just out of work. I totally agree on that. I'm I'm the same way with Henry. All right, let's talk about some sleepers now, Uh, some guys that could surprise uh, and help you win your fantasy league this year. Give me a couple. Yeah, first sleeper I'm going to go with is Maze Pirine. So they, he's been told that he's going to have a significant role in Denver, regardless of Javante Williams' status. Um, he's currently going in rounds about 11 through 13 in drafts. And I don't think Williams is going to be ready for the start of the season. I think he's going to be coming back around weeks three, maybe four. So you're going to get a couple of games with Samaj Pirine being that lead back in Denver. Um, also, recovering from that injury that Williams has, 
it's tricky. I mean, we saw this with J.K. Dobbins last year. I mean, Dobbins only played a few games, and he was expected to be fully back at the beginning of the season coming off that leg injury. Um, so I really like Samaje Pirine to step up and be a sleeper going later in drafts. Um, second one I'm going to be looking at is James Cook. Uh, Singletary is gone now. They did bring in Damien Harris, but I still think James Cook is going to be that lead back in there with Damien Harris kind of being in that secondary role. Um, but the big concern, I think, with James Cook is finding the end zone. Last year, he only had three touchdowns, two rushing, one receiving touchdown. Um, the good thing for him this year, even more so than I think with Singletary, is that Josh Allen is supposedly going to rush the ball less. That means more touches for James Cook. I think they're going to be using running backs more inside that 10-yard line on that goal line just to uh, help preserve Josh Allen's health. Um, as the competitor in Josh Allen, he probably won't like that, but I think to preserve Josh Allen through the entire season, um, you got to be looking for the running backs in that goal line situation, which should help Cook. Yeah, Cook intrigues me as well. I think he's uh, dropping a little later, and he should in drafts, and he's definitely worth the risk at where you can get him. So I like that call on him. A couple sleepers for me. The first one is Rashad Penny. So he's off injured. Uh, he's been had a, had a hard time staying on the field. He moves to a great situation on Philadelphia, though. And he's playing behind another off-injured back, and that's uh, DeAndre Swift. So these guys are going to compete for that starting job. Penny's been tremendous when on the field, though. He averaged 6.1 yards per carry last year, two straight seasons averaging more than six yards per carry. That's unheard of. I mean, just an explosive back, moves to the best offense that he's ever been a part of in Philadelphia. I think he could end up winning that starting job. Just has to stay on the field. I think he's worth the risk, though. Uh, in that offense. So I'm, I'm going to get a lot of shares of Penny. I think his price tag is definitely worth the ceiling that he brings to fantasy teams. My other sleeper is Dante Foreman with the Chicago Bears. So he signed with the Bears this offseason. Uh, he's not going to be handed the har- starting job, but Clear Herbert, I don't know if he's set to be a starter. He's more of a pass catching back, in my opinion. Hasn't exactly excelled when given three down opportunities, and Foreman has. He was really good when starting last year after Christian McCaffrey was traded. He had five 100-yard rushing games, ran for 914 yards on the season in nine starts. So he produced one on the field. Doesn't get a lot of work in the passing game, so that hurts his overall fantasy value. But again, you can get him really cheap in the middle to later rounds of drafts, and he can end up being the starter in what could be a good offense with Justin Fields emerging, some more options in the passing game as well. So Foreman's another guy I've been targeting in early drafts. Let's talk about the rookie position now, Logan. And both of us, we did not say B. John Robinson was our favorite rookie just because it's so easy to do. We we, we love him. We think he's going to have a huge season. I mean, he's a top 10 pick in most drafts at this point. So we're going to talk about other another rookie that could help this year. So who's the rookie that you like outside of Robinson? Yeah, I like, I like Gibbs from Detroit. So as you mentioned with David Montgomery, I think both of them can have value in drafts. I yeah. think – both of them are definitely targets to be looking at. Um, Gibbs is more of that pass catching back. Uh, Montgomery is more of that rush rusher. But Detroit's offense is so elite that both of them are going to have value. They put up so many yards and touchdowns. They're, I believe, the fourth highest scoring NFL team last year. They just play in those shootout games. Um, Gibbs is currently going near round four in drafts. Um, similar running backs near there is Dalvin Cook, uh, Pierce, and Aaron Jones. Um, so I like him out of those four. I think that the others are a little bit more of a question mark, even though Gibbs hasn't played in the NFL yet. But I really like his ceiling that he has with that offense. Yeah, I agree. I think they're both going to have value. Like I mentioned with uh, earlier, I mean, two years ago, both backs had more than 150-plus carries for Detroit. Yeah. So they're both going to get touches. Gibbs is probably going to get 200-plus touches, and he can do damage with that amount of work. So I'm definitely not fading him, but I, I still think Montgomery's going to have a role. So. Both those lines backs looking pretty good right now. My rookie, I'm going a little deeper here because I think he could end up getting a lot of playing time. That's Kendra Miller with the New Orleans Saints. So they picked him in the third round of this year's draft. Gives the team a little bit of a different look at running back, more of a power back, good at turning out the yards. Isn't a great pass catcher just yet, but that situation in New Orleans is scary. Alvin Kamara, all sorts of legal issues. He might not be even be on that team. Jamal Williams is there as well, but I think Miller's the future, and he's going to at least split work. Uh, if it's just him and Williams as the running backs at tandem. So I think he's going to have good value as rookie season. And New Orleans, they like to ro- rotate backs as well. So he's definitely a guy I'm not sleeping on. You can get him really late right now. And I think Miller's a great speculative pick later in drafts, could end up emerging. There is someone every year that does that. 
comes out of nowhere and surprises fantasy owners. So Kendra Miller's my guy this year to fit the bill there. I like that pick. I think there are just so many question marks with running backs so far. If you're drafting right now, I would almost load up on as many running backs as you possibly can um, compared to wide receivers in the later rounds, just because there's so many question marks with who is actually going to be that lead back. And especially with maybe possible injuries, suspensions, all of that. So I would definitely be taking um, running backs near the end of the draft and load up on those instead of wide receivers for your bench spots. I agree. Normally it's the other way around, but like you said, a lot of uncertainty with that running back position right now. And there's even a couple guys, Kareem Hunt, Ezekiel Elliott, as we're taping this, not yeah. on a team yet. And yeah. Leonard Fournette too, another guy. That's three yeah. backs that have been really good for fantasy teams. I mean, who knows what role they're going to get this year. And it's, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how it's playing out. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a position you want to take a risk on. Yeah. All right, Logan, thanks for joining me. Really appreciate it. Remember, all sorts of drafts going on here at Real Time Fantasy Sports. Go to rtsports.com, click on that Money League link. We have all different options, our best ball leagues, our championships, half million dollar for our fantasy championship this year, but all sorts of drafts right now. So uh, get in one today. Thanks again, Logan, for joining me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Jeff. This has been Jeff Power with Real Time Fantasy Sports. And this has been Logan Glasser from Real Time Fantasy Sports. Have a great day, everyone. 